distribution of linen, the whole world was told by a cop. He's a local wacko. Y'all got a big job. You better start thinking. Because you haven't got much time. They're moving in on you. Ronald Reagan wins by landslide. Oh, all that day on the news, all you heard was record crowds is coming out, record numbers is coming out, and then we get to facts and find out that only 53.2% of the American people voted, the lowest turnout in the history of an election. And if it's the lowest turnout in the history of an election, and Ronald Reagan only got 10% more than Jimmy Carter, how are you going to have a landslide with, only, with less than 26%? Y'all crazy? Oh, they say the Republicans just steamroll. Come on, you see, it wasn't no. I mean, Mr. Republican is Barry Goldwater. 33 years this dude been running and winning, and all at once when it comes where the Republicans have a steamroll, he damn near can't get elected in a Republican stronghold. You going to pay for it. You sit back and let the gasoline industry rip you off. And down in your heart, you know it ain't no shortage. When the prices get right, the gas just flow. It's come out your ears. <laughs> they got so much gas now, they don't know what to do with it. Say, well, the Iraqian, uh, uh, Iranian war. You see, it's the Iranians still been shipping 600,000 barrels of oil out every day with the war going on. Where's the shortage? And we supplying both sides with spare parts. <laughs> and if you don't believe it, go to Jackson, Mississippi and check a company called Vickers. They work in three shifts, overtime, around the clock. We supplying both sides. It's about money. And now Regan say, well, well, I'm going to cut back on everything except the military. You serious? That's where you're going to get your money. Yeah, let's get them welfare folks off. God, I, I pray every night that the welfare folks be put off. I just have a different view of welfare. All them folks that be sipping cocktails tomorrow at lunch and write off on the income tax, just welfare folks. All them folks that ride first class on a plane but wouldn't be in the front if they couldn't write that whole ticket off on the income tax, that's welfare. All them folks that hang out in them restaurants that cost $75 to $100 to $200 per person, per meal, wouldn't be hanging out if they couldn't write the whole meal off on the income tax, that's welfare. But you ain't going to mess with none of them. And they know it. That's why they keep feeding them to you. Folks on welfare just lazy and shifters and don't want to work. They told you that. You didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, they told you that. But what they won't tell you is something that they know. That of the 26 million people on welfare in America, 24% is over 65, 50% is children, 8% is disabled, 1% is blind, and 13% is single parents with children at home. That leaves only 3.8% that's workable. All in myths that they keep laying on you. Welfare recipients cheat. The Justice Department know better than that. Fraud and corruption in the welfare is less than 4%. God, if we could get the Pentagon, Pentagon steel down to that, we'd be in good shape. <laughs> All them niggas on welfare show sure is. 30% of the welfare of black, 56% is white, 14% is other minorities. Not worried about that 56%. See, I can see me being on there because I came over to slavery. I don't understand white folks on welfare. <laughs> and listen, white folk complain sometimes about us. You think niggas stole y'all in Europe and put you on a boat, kicking and screaming, <laughs> and brought you over here. Oh, 
if it wasn't for welfare, we'd be all right. The country going broke. Did you check out Jimmy Carter's budget in 1980? Health, education, and welfare was $79 billion out of a total budget of $439 billion. And what day are you going to get upset about those companies that don't pay no income taxes? And now they pay just a little bit. <laughs> this is the latest list I could get, 1975. Corporations paying no federal income tax in 1975. Ford Motor Company made $148 million, no income tax. Western Electric made $185,610,000, no income tax. This next list said companies paying less than 10% income tax. American Electrical Power Company made $254 million, paid 1% income tax. Would, couldn't you make it if you could get by 1%? <laughs> and these are all these patriotic folks talking about buying tanks. <laughs> you buying the tank. They buying the cocktail. You see, there's a lot of people that can stand up here and tell you what I'm telling you, but they're scared of you. And that's kind of sad. Because they know how most people in this country react to the truth. And God has blessed me well, because I ain't never cared about what y'all think about me. <laughs> and been knowing for a long time that truth ain't never had to be validated by ignorance. But this is the lie in this country on the run, on the planet. And it, it, it ain't even no fun to me no more because whatever America say, you know it's just the opposite. <laughs> if they say the hostage is going to be released on election day, they've probably been released for two weeks. The sky lab is falling. We don't know where it's going to fall. Oh, come on. You said if America didn't know where it went, it wouldn't tell nobody. It'd make like we didn't know what it was. I don't know what was it. So the minute I heard him say, Skylab is falling, Scott, uh-oh, let me check it. <laughs> and, 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 and they be so funny because they just, they just overdo their lie. Oh, they, get big, they took the map of Australia and showed the, showed the line where it fell. Alice Springs, I said, how many of y'all know it fell in Alice Springs, Australia? Anybody? Alice Springs, Australia. I said, well, wait a minute now. If it fell in Alice Springs, I said, the way they lie. It either didn't fall there or something going on in Alice Springs they ain't told us about. And those of you that like to do a little research, if you would go back, you don't have to go too far. Get the Wall Street Journal, Monday, October the 1st, 1979. And here's a full page story, front page, and runs over to page six on Alice Springs, Australia. Alice Springs, Australia has the highest concentration of CIA agents other than Langley, Virginia has 225 because Alice Springs, Australia is the United States secret tracking station outside this country. So just on a simple thing like a sky lab falling, the country will lie to you. And if you think that's what a democratic, free society is supposed to be about, it's lying to you 24 hours a day so when you hear the truth, the truth sounds like a lie. I tell you something, if y'all going to continue to vote, if you're going to continue to want to believe that, oh, there's nothing like voting to keep a society free, then you better get serious about it. You better demand that our election day will be holidays. We put more get up in Halloween than we do in federal elections. We spend more time. Buy costumes. Trick or treat, that's what we need to have election on Halloween because that's what they end up being, trick or treat. <laughs> and i tell you something else. If y'all serious about your elections, you better not only start asking for the right to elect, you better start demanding the right to select. And i tell you something else. If you're really serious about a democratic process and your right to vote, you better start questioning who guards those voting machines in between elections. It's very important. Might be the mafia. Might be the CIA, might be the Russians. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was a candidate twice. I ran for mayor of Chicago against Mayor Daley. <laughs> he 
told me that he would win, and I acted surprised. Oh, really? <laughs> and then I ran for the presidency of the United States in 1968. I voted for myself. <laughs> in the city of Chicago, county of Cook, state of Illinois. And to this day, I have not received one vote in the city of Chicago, county of Cook, state of Illinois. And I tried to tell y'all then, if they can take the candidate's vote, you really don't stand a chance. And I know how they do it. They did it with me. 1968, NBC, CBS, ABC hooked up $48 million worth of computers to start tabulating your elections. On November the 5th, 1968, on election night at midnight, NBC, CBS, and ABC shut all the computers down. $48 million worth of computers were shut down. And in your free democratic society with your free press, only one newspaper, two days later, reported the story. And that was the Wall Street Journal. And on November the 7th, 1968, front page story. Election computers goof give Gregory nine million votes. <laughs> New York. Some machines just aren't to be believed. Take the big computer in New York that was designed to compile results of Tuesday's general election. At one point early yesterday morning, the machines was crediting Dick Gregory, the comedian turned presidential candidate, with nine million votes in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Think about that now. Because when you understand that, you understand what happened the other day. Except the Cronkites, when this machine went crazy, and instead of giving them to Dick Nixon, something went wrong, and they tabulated them to me, and it was showing Dick Gregory, the new president of the United States, with a plurality of 74%. And that's when they shut the computers down because Cronkite and them knew something was wrong. But if you remember the other night when you was looking at those elections, I don't give a damn what channel you was looking at, them cats knew something was wrong. You could see it in their faces. And the same thing that happened here just happened the other day. So y'all go on and play your games here. Y'all go on and run around talking about, oh, how free you are and how sad you feel for everybody else. Well, I tell you what, have fun quick, baby, because the next 18 months are going to be the most critical 18 months that have ever happened to you in the history of this planet. And, and we shouldn't have no problem making it. If we was truly the, the Christian society that we would like to believe we are, are you serious? We're so full of hatred and scheming and plotting and lying and deceitful. And we got churches in America right now with a Jew on the cross but wouldn't let a Jew in the church. And if Jesus Christ came alive next Sunday, they would have to ask him to leave. Y'all better get your game together. You better reach in there where that real God is locked. There ain't no isms and no osms. It's called Big John. And when you find that real God, that real God don't think no more of men than it do of women. Anytime I can hear the Pope say, well, a woman cannot be priest, I can handle that. That don't make me no difference as long as it's Catholicism. That's cool. Do what you want to do. But then he said, because God don't want it. Hey, hey, wait, oh, now you're messing with my thing. Now, oh, you didn't reach past Catholicism, now I'm messing with God. And if I thought I, God I pray to every day would treat me better than a woman because I'm a man, I don't want no part of that God in no shape, form, or fashion, okay? <laughs> I 
I say to you today, you've got a big job. I do not believe we've gone beyond the point of no return. I spent this holiday in Uganda. And as a father with 10 children, it's a hell of a thing to see. See, baby is alive today that you know if you come back tomorrow, they'll be dead. but to see people dying with dignity. And to see the superpowers run in and bring all the wheat and all the corn you want but wouldn't bring them a tractor. And as I walk through the streets in Uganda, looking at all that devastation, I got to reflecting on EDR men. And I remember when we first jumped on the State Department about training EDR men's police department. They denied it. They had to take it all the way to court before they admitted that EDR men's police department was trained in Fort Worth, Texas. The same country that was calling them a savage and inhuman and all them crazy names. We was trained in this police department in Fort Worth, Texas, so we can sell helicopters. And even after they was forced to admit it, listen how they do it. Despite expressions of disapproval by the U.S. State Department, the Ugandan police force will be permitted to complete their helicopter training in Fort Worth, Texas. I was traveling with a friend He said, you know, I was over here two months ago, and now I'm over here with you, and you just don't seem to be as upset as I thought you would. Why? I said, well, I know there's a universal God. And I'm not involved with isms and osms, and I know what you, what you plant in that ground. You're going to harvest it one day, and nobody should know that any better than you folks that live in this state. Now you can go out there in the middle of the night and plant some cucumber seeds thinking you planted wheat, you're going to get cucumbers. Now you can go to bed and raise your little flag and have your little fun and drink your little alcohol and think you're living in the greatest country in the world and oh, blah, 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 but you're going to pay for this. I listen to them call the Iranian savages. And I remember not too long ago, there was a group of people that had made this government take some pajamas off the market for little tots because it had a thing in it called Tris. It's supposed to be a fire retardant, but it caused cancer. To this day, every morning, 10 million pairs of Tris pajamas get shipped out of this country to the third world. Yeah. One day, you're really going to find out who the animals are. I know on the Food for Peace program every year we ship a half a billion dollars worth of tobacco to the third world countries under the auspices of food. I listened to the hostages on television the other day say well what I was doing when they broke through the embassy I was destroying all the documents that's a lie I brought the documents back they might have destroyed some but they didn't destroy all of them and I think from here on in that fellow should say I destroyed as many as I could and when I confronted the State Department with these documents they can't lie because they got their names and their serial numbers And I want to know how they caught us by surprise. The most important U.S. commercial objective in Iran is to help the American firms rebuild a strong market position. <laughs> well, I really feel sorry for what all of those Americans had to go through while it was a money game. 
Uh, this is marked sensitive and secret. August the 1st, 1979. From a Mr. Sanders to a Mr. Small, and the telex number is 20313. So they can't lie about it. The danger of hostages being taken in Iran will persist. We should make no move towards admitting the Shah until we have obtained and tested a new and a more substantial and effective guard force for the embassy. Secondly, when the decision is made to admit the Shah, we should quietly assign additional American security guards to the embassy to provide protection for key personnel until the danger period have, is considered over. Now, how can they be sending telexes from the State Department to the American Embassy in August saying that if we bring the show, there's a possibility hostages be taken and then sit around and tell you we are utterly caught by surprise? How in the hell can Jimmy Carter stand there in Germany and say, oh, what, what have happened is far more than that. He was told when the 13 came back what they were doing. So now all at once he won't act like he didn't know it. How in the hell are you going to sit back and let the Russians take 400,000 troops across the border into Afghanistan and the President and the State Department say, they caught us by surprise, uh, we didn't know it. Hey, we got satellites up there. You couldn't move four cockroaches across the border without us knowing it. <laughs> you got a big job. Y'all can go on and play your little LPs and learn your new dances, but do it quick. And I don't know when y'all gonna get together and straighten out these colleges and universities across this country. <laughs> y'all clapping, but y'all really don't mean it. You ain't gonna do it. You serious? <laughs> The reason they're hard to straighten out is the same reason why that, that super rich, that manipulators is hard for us to deal with because basically they're a reflection of us. You cheat on a history test, they cheat on the whole continents. Cheating is cheating. Most folk go to college, go on to false pretense. Half of you come to college because you, your mother and father went to college and the other half come because they didn't go. <laughs> well, I tell you what. The true learning process is not controlled by heads of departments. The true learning process is in the top of your head and is controlled by that same force that controls the universe. And the true learning process will never open up until it's around the oasis of love. Most of these colleges and universities across this country is nothing but cesspools of hatred. I just checked in this building and they give me two keys. One, to get on the elevator. The elevator don't move unless you put a key in it. College? I mean, who y'all worried about? Some niggas from Chicago coming? <laughs> y'all worried about each other? Hey, y'all lock your dormitory door today, not because somebody across town gonna get you, right in the building which you'll get you. And you walk across campus tomorrow and pass three or four hundred people and won't even speak in a hurry to go to class and read a damn dead book. And you black folks, and all the hell you catch in these white racist institutions, you niggas got a little clicks. This one don't like this one. This one don't talk to this one. This one not, not crazy. Not crazy. And you black fraternities and sorority, I don't know when y'all gonna get y'all's act together. <laughs> When I think about the amount of power you black fraternities and sororities have, most of you black fraternities and sororities have been in business longer than most institutions in America have been institutions. But you're playing games. I'm going to join the fraternity or the sorority, and you're going to put a blindfold and hit me with a stick. Nigga, you must be out your mind. <laughs> I've got to walk across campus with a bucket full of bricks. I mean, why the hell I got to come to you, nigga, to be humiliated? I've been humiliated for 200 years. That's why you're scared of a Ronald Reagan. 
Because instead of dealing with love and building leadership, you was playing a game that you don't have the luxuries to play, baby. You play your little funky games if you want to, but you niggas is fighting for survival. You can play all them little funny games, but it is about love. It is about the brotherhood and the sisterhood. That's what I need. America's what my mama's, 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 mama. The last thing I need is another lick. I need you to, to reach out and grab my hand and let me feel that God force radiating through our body. That's the only qualification I should have to deal with to be a member of your group. What y'all need to do is come together and, and deal with these white racist institutions, these sexist institutions. And y'all sit here and just, if I, if I just floated down here from the moon and looking at you niggas tonight, I think everything's all right. Y'all just as happy. <laughs> just, y'all just look at you. The minute you walk on one of these campuses, you ought to start. <laughs> and every three seconds, you ought to flinch. Say, what's wrong? Say, I know y'all doing something. I don't know what it is. But, <laughs> oh, And the reason, the reason, because you pay a hell of a price. The highest suicide rate in the black community is you blacks that have gone through these white institutions. The highest drug addiction rate in the black community, the highest alcohol rate, the highest insanity rate is you blacks that have gone through these white institutions. So you should be concerned about it. There's 105 black colleges and universities. There's not enough black colleges and universities to hold you. You have to go to white institutions, but you better be about changing them. We've got 213,000 black in these black universities and colleges. 80% of all black students in college in America is in white institutions. 80% of you are in white institutions, but last year, 75% of all black college graduates came out in black colleges. It's a game you're playing. A lot of y'all are just here because y'all represent some federal money. They just go out and recruit niggas with the mentality of pimps. <laughs> My daughter called me when I was in Iran. She's been in University five days. I said, Dad, I just talked to mom. She told me to call you. I'm fixing to quit. I said, Why? How long you been there? She said, Five days. I said, Four girls have been raped in the dormitories. I said, Dear, I'd rather have your body raped in a black institution than your mind raped at Harvard and Yale. Okay? Because I know what, I went to a white institution, I know what they do to your head. I hang out with nigger after nigger that can come out of these products and I know how sick they are. Because you all sit in these institutions and act like business as usual. Oh, if these white folk could follow some of you niggas home and listen to y'all be rapping about what's going on. <laughs> First, I don't even know why y'all come to this state. Most of you niggas don't like farmers. Somewhere, somewhere one day you're going to dawn on you sitting here reading books that go against you. One day you women are going to realize that you're sitting in sexist institution reading books that go against you. I don't know how to this day you women can deal with that Bible. It's sexist as it is. God ain't nothing. And they don't lie about it. They never said it was Christianity's version or God said King James version of the Bible. <laughs> and if you just took five minutes and checked out King James, he was such a weird, slimy, sick, degenerate <laughs> punk, he'd literally make Hitler look like God. <laughs> and when them 25 finished interpreting from him, he killed every one of them. We can turn this around. 
how long will you women go to college, go to school, in your first year be called a fresh man? <coughs> Change it around and let them start calling us fresh women and we close these schools down. You see, you white folks really caught me by surprise because I really thought y'all had y'all's game. I thought y'all was really boss Charlie. I didn't know you white women didn't get the right to vote to 1920. I thought this was white folk country. No, my sister came over here as a slave. I didn't realize that most white folks in America couldn't vote because they never put this thing together for white folks. This thing was put together for a handful of greedy old white men, and I always ever came with five white folks on the whole planet. The rest of y'all are imposters. Because <laughs> white ain't got nothing to do with a color. It's an attitude. And if you ain't got some big billions of bucks in the bank, you can't have that attitude. And if you don't believe it, watch and see what they're going to roll in on you in about 18 more months. you got a big job. But there's black folks silly enough to believe that all America want to do is get niggas. And there's some white folks silly enough to believe that, that you're safe. Huh. You better check out Kent State. You better get some good looks at them pictures. Because there wasn't no black folks in the crowd that day. See, they can't make like they were shooting at niggas and hit white folk by mistake. <laughs> but I was just so sure. I figured y'all had y'all's game together. And I look around and find out, hell, I, I probably got more going for me than you got going for you, because at least I ain't scared of them. But I say to you today, we can turn this around. Particularly those of you that understand prayer and understand God, and if you really want to know what prayer and God is all about, get a good look at those hostages. They look better than most of us in this room. I'm not saying that all the stuff they say they did, I'm not violent. I'm saying that when, when a whole world prays for you, it works. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you that there is something stronger than them guns and them wheeling and dealing, folks. And Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan and the military, oh, they're going to take the credit. Like God didn't even exist. The same folks who helicopters, the mightiest military on the planet, got knocked down by a grain of sand. But I keep saying, if this military is so strong, why don't they go to Washington State and make Mount Helena behave? <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is when you realize who you are, and how important you are, and realize there's not another you in the entire universe. Think about that. When you wake up in the morning, before you just jump out and face another one of them old funny days, when you get out the bed in the morning, think about there's not another you in the entire universe that just woke up. And this universe cannot work right without you. That's how important you are. And once you understand that, then a handful of them manipulating pimps won't have no power over you. And nothing will scare you. Drop the bum. What bum? Drop it. If my God can't keep one of them funny bums off me, I'm in trouble. I know who I am. My body splits more atoms in one tenth billion of a second than all the atom smashes these pimps and put together can split in a lifetime. And they know who you are. Yeah, they know. That's what their movies be about. They don't do nothing. They play games with you. They be sending messages in their movies. They set patterns up for you. When they get ready to turn y'all on the drugs, all the movies is about drugs. French Connection wins the Academy Award. Oh, I looked at that and I said, oh, wait a minute, what y'all fixing to do? In Star Wars, Star Wars, well, if you really understood what you were seeing when you saw Star Wars, then you know, I mean, they really hip. I mean, that little white light, you see the white light coming out of them swords? 
That's prayer. That's, that's God. And that's what they was telling you. All y'all ain't into your spiritual thing. I'm going to replace y'all with this, this thing here. That's what they're telling you. All y'all that really haven't reached in there and got that, you're going to be replaced with that robot. Because they really don't need you no more. And that's what it's all about. That's what they're fixing to do. I mean, they don't need you for what? They don't need you to find no plane. They, got, they can push a button and make anything they want to make. And they never liked you in the first place. They just tolerated you. And just trick you 24 hours a day. So oh, the Japanese, they're really into technology. When? How? How do they get into technology? That's the biggest trick they ever pulled on you. Every time I go to Japan and land at the airport, every plane the Japanese have come from here. Now, what is technology? The ability to make a Toyota or a 747. And every time we talk about making some MX missile, we don't say that we go into Japan and ask them to build it for us. We build it. Anything we want to build, we be serious about it. Then why in the hell do they make like we can't build a car? Because the same corporate mentality that runs Boeing and Lockheed runs Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler. They want to deliberately close them down so they can fire you. That's what it's about. So they can open up three years later, automate it. Once they fire, you don't have to hire you back no more. That's what the whole game's all about. And they're trying to find some way to get you to die because you, you're going crazy when you find out your old age pension money ain't there. <laughs> how the hell your old age pension money ain't there? There ain't no babies coming up. That's how, that's, the folks that's getting old age pension now is getting it from the babies that was born 30 years ago. So when you start coming up with abortion and, and all them pills, Ain't no babies being born. Ain't no pension money in there. Y'all better learn how to farm. <laughs> and they got you eating all this garbage. They're killing you every day. And then got you believing, oh, we getting older. How, where? Where, where? Where? How many old folks you see lately? Yeah, when I, was, I was a little tired every time I walk around, I see old folks. I got to go out my way to see them now. Can't find none. But every time you read these old trick reports, they say, oh, well, the American life inspect, come on. You know how they get that? That's predicated on the babies and the, everybody that die in the country. That determines me. And what they won't tell you is 20 and 30 years ago, babies was born the first day, second day, first year. That's been up to five years now. And they lying to you, making you think you're living five years long. That's a damn lie. You are dying younger now than you ever had before. But because of abortions, and because of the pills, we don't have that baby statistic to bring that rate down. That's what it's all about. And in a free democratic society, you shouldn't have to be dealing with all that trickery. But I tell you what, you better use your God intelligence. Come on down and get your swine flu shot. I mean, right there, you should have known something was wrong with it. <laughs> I mean, they're going to name something after a pig. <laughs> And so we forced their hand, and they finally had to tell why they named it Swine Flu Shot. Right there. CIA linked to 1971 swine virus in Cuba. And what that story is about is the CIA admitted that they developed that thing, dropped it over Havana in 71, but the wind blew that day, and it blew it into a rural area, and Castro had to kill a half a million pigs. And ever since that day, it's been referred to as Swine Flu. They don't give a damn about you. And now all at once, they want to act so patriotic because the folks is coming home. How many of y'all in this room is aware of the fact that this government was forced to admit that hundreds of millions of dollars of heroin was smuggled into this country from Vietnam, sold up inside the dead bodies of dead American servicemen being shipped home for burial? How many of y'all know that? cut their bellies out, take their intestines out, and put two and a half kilos of heroin in their belly and make a ship and made each body that they did it to worth $200 million. Y'all got a big job. I mean, no nation in their right mind would say to industry, well, just dump your waste in the water there. Yeah, the drinking water. We'll clean it up down the road. 
<laughs> and no people in their right mind would tolerate it. Dump the waste in the water, then go in with all them crazy chemicals and clean the water, but, and they're right, they'll clean the chemicals out the water, but what it takes to clean the chemicals out the water will kill you. This is so sad. This is in Duluth, Minnesota. Especially for you black folk, because Duluth is all white. <laughs> Duluth, Minnesota, they messed the water up so bad, they had to pass out free drinking water. Free drink to the whole town. And look at this here. Water in this packet contained 0.4 to 0.6 milligrams of chlorine per liter and 0.9 to 1.5 milligrams of fluorine per liter. Per liter. <laughs> Here's a Washington Post story. Cancer death rate are tied to chlorine in our water. <laughs> Here's another one. Fluorine, fluoridation of the water causes cancer. Damn, they're getting them twice here. <laughs> And I know it catches a lot of you black folks by surprise. You don't think they do that to white folks, would you? Well, I got news for you. When they built the first nuclear plant, see, they don't build nuclear plants in black neighborhoods. No. They said, them niggas got enough fallout. Don't add no more. On <laughs> but when they built the first nuclear plant in upstate New York to convince those white folks 20 years ago it was safe, they built the grade school right next to it. Look how vicious they are. And even folks in America that are for nuclear plants, one thing, you never let them build your grade school next to it. So we win in that battle. And they got you duped in believing that, that nuclear energy is cheap energy. Why? They've subsidized it to the tune of $40 billion. Hell, if you subsidize dirt for $40 billion, <laughs> I get some energy out of it. And I just don't understand how they just keep y'all in the dark and keep tricking y'all. Got y'all believing that gas is short, because most folks believe that Exxon makes oil. You know, oil is determined by the roar of the sea, and as long as the sea is doing that, you're going to have oil. And yet and still, they got you, oh, it's going to be a shortage. Well, when did, when, did the, when did the sea stop moving? Now we tighten up the gas over here, and people got to fighting in the filling stations. Yeah, woman was pregnant. Y'all read that out in L.A.? Pulled up to the front of the line and said, I got to go to the hospital. Dude said, you get up there, you go in the hospital, lady. <laughs> guy caught a guy siphoning gas out of his car and killed him. And you know that was a white boy. <laughs> Nigga catch you siphoning some gas, you're going to strike a match on your lips and drink it all. <laughs> Well, I'm glad the Iranian crisis is over. Maybe now the press that have totally ignored this very important lawsuit that's working its way up in the United States District Court of Northern California, maybe they'll tell you about this now. It's probably one of the most important lawsuits in the history of this country because if you ever get exposed to what's going on here, then you find out a serious business. Oh, oh, this lawsuit is against the United States government by Congressman Leo Ryan's family. Y'all got a good little old paper here in the state, the Des Moines Register. But I wonder how come they didn't run this story. House panel probes CIA link to Jonestown. CIA's already admitted they was in Jonestown. And that's what this case is all about. That's what this case was all about. And how in the world anybody can convince you that 900 people committed suicide drinking cyanide and there's nothing you can put in your body that will cause convulsions and muscle spasms no more than cyanide and yet and still they got you believing all of them gonna lay down peacefully and die face down. They took the pictures 13 days after they was dead and you didn't even realize that you cannot 
lay dead in tropical heat for 13 days without your body being bloated, big as this room. Their bodies hadn't even started swelling. And they said, oh, 400. And they said, oh, we made a mistake. It's 900. But the reason we didn't know it because 500 was under the 400. 